Hello everybody, welcome back to Lono Farms. I've been doing a little work off camera. I think where we left off, we had finished baling this field. We started cultivating it. I'm using the, oh, huh, I'm dragging a rock. <laughs> I hadn't noticed that till just now. I am using the uh, stubble cultivator mod or whatever it's called which we can see the stubble appearing in the field as we till it under getting ready to plant a new crop looks like I came upon it at about the right time it's probably well I don't know what it's gonna do it's on higher mode I don't know if it'll finish this little spot and then search for a you know what I'm just gonna pull it, put it out of its misery I will take care of it myself. We're going to be getting this ready for a crop of grass. Previously we had wheat in it, which is almost the only other thing that has ever grown on Lone Oak. Although what we're going to see in a moment, maybe in this episode, is kind of some of the variety that they tried out this particular year with this year being 2022 as I'm recording this and already it's in the fall of the year of 2022 so the harvest is past kind of like it is here in game and they're preparing for fall work and winter upcoming as things slow down quite a bit but we're going to get this guy going again, and then I want to share some pictures I took this past, oh, what was it, June? It was June. We had a, a family reunion, and part of that involved taking a visit to the old farm uh, once again. So I went up there. I always enjoy opportunities to head up there and take pictures. Not that it's limited to those times, but I think everybody understands we get busy in life and don't always have time to do what we'd like to do. Yeah, I'll put on my differential and four-wheel drive. Okay, hopefully you'll be all right while we step away for a moment. We have a rainstorm coming, it appears, in 37 minutes, so I think we'll continue cultivating even in the rain. It's the first pass, so I don't anticipate it would involve any compaction. Although, interestingly, this, I think I do have a mod in here, maybe I've mentioned it previously, compaction mod. Yeah, see, you see in this field where we're tilling up, everywhere where the plow texture or part of it is disappearing, it's because we are tilling it up and, in essence, removing the compaction. Alas, kind of on the corners where tires are touching and there isn't coverage with the cultivator coming behind it, um, it still has some um, uh, compaction there might be able to fix it if we took care of our tires uh, and lowered the air pressure and took some precautionary measures I just haven't done that so we're gonna have to deal with a little bit of compaction but I wanted to come out to the map let me first go out here you'll notice and this is by virtue of just how the game works our grass is ready to harvest again now I know in a previous episode I showed kind of how a grass seed crop, you know, would be first windrowed, then combine with a bell pickup. And I got to say, that's a once per year type activity. Uh, at least in our area, you don't get two crops of seed grass off of it. You know, you would do it uh, in the late spring early summer you would windrow it over summer after it dried you would combine it and unlike in the game here where you see plenty of green in the grass in reality over the summer after harvest 
you know, our summers here are very dry. That's one thing that enables us to raise grass seed as a crop, is having it dry. Plus, we have very wet winters, and that's kind of the one-two combo that is needed to do it. So in real life, instead of looking green, instead of growing back into lush green, what you instead see is kind of the leftover uh, stubble. You wouldn't see it like this. It would be quite yellow. So, and it basically, I think the grass, in some respects, just goes dormant after harvest so it doesn't grow up again and you wouldn't like it shows here get another crop what instead happens you know as fall comes on and as the fall rains come on it will start to green up and it just greens up just in time for the winter rains whereupon it goes dormant again so in game here, you know, we have a choice of doing something with it again. I mean, sure, I could go windrow it again. I could combine it again. I'm not going to do that. That just isn't realistic. Um, but something that a lot of the farmers would do around here is they would mow the stubble. And I don't know if they waited entirely to the fall to do it. Uh, a lot of times it was still in the warmth and heat of summer that following harvest, following removal of all the bales, they would head out to the field with, uh, oh, something like a flail mower or some other kind of mower, and they would take the grass down and buzz it off entirely. You know, the windrower, when it came through and you cut it for the windrows, you know, it did a pretty good job, but a lot of times it would leave taller parts, shorter parts, uh, some parts that weren't cut at all, you know, if the operator missed a section. So in the fall, what would happen, uh, or early fall, late summer, is the farmer would just come in and mow it off clean. And the reason, as I understand this, was, and we'll get into this in another episode, um, the reason is, you know, they no longer burn the fields, or not many of them. And burning had the process of kind of shocking the grass into uh, re-stimulating growth. It took care of some of the pests and, and so forth and so on. And it reduced the field to, oh, how do you say it? Reduced it just to the grass and all it was clean, you could say. Well, I think mowing has been used in some cases to reduce the stubble and to prepare it for... Uh, chemical application and that kind of thing. You know, if you've got a lot of crud on top of your ground, you don't want to put chemical on that because the chemical will stick to the, the, the crud that's laying on top of the ground. So I think the mowing process would pulverize a lot of the ad, make it disappear, and it would make it make the chemical application in the fall more effective. So I think that was part of it. Whether it stimulated growth or not, uh, I don't know. It, it it wasn't near the same as you know burning would do. But be all that as it may, I kind of got distracted. Uh, we'll do that at some point. I just happened to see these fields ready for harvest. You know where uh, where are we in the summer? Where are we in the fall yet? Nope, we're the late summer, so I'll probably wait a little bit, but I think we're going to come in and we're going to mow off the grass. I have a mower mod, um, so we'll get it. And, and in the mowing, there was no... I know when you run a mower in-game to farming sim, it's going to drop a, a windrow, it's going to drop grass of some kind that you can come in and collect. We're not going to do that when we mow. It, uh, it's going to mow it clean and it isn't going to leave any residue because in real life when you do it following harvest there is nothing there to pick up. It's just pulverized, almost you might say mulched and once the rain would come it kind of would uh, have that effect. There's, there's nothing there. Anyway, what I wanted to show, you know, when I came up for the family reunion back in June or whatever, one of the things I did was obviously visit the main farm, but I did it in a couple parts. 
you know, you see this field down here. This isn't one of the Lone Oak uh, farms. It doesn't belong to my uncles. It's a neighbor that they've had for a long time. Um, so they've uh, they've helped their neighbor burn this field. They've been on here. They've deer hunted with their neighbor down in the woods over here, so forth and so on. So we've been around this, you know, my whole life. Um, this may be by way of refreshing memory coming out of the main farm. There's a 30 foot wide right of way that comes down here that belongs to Lone Oak. And it comes down here, and this is a Lone Oak property over here, it's just off the map. They farm up here, they farm all of this along here, and they have a, quite a bit of uh, canyon property down here. I say canyon, it's brush and woodland and that kind of thing, pasture for a number of the beef cattle that they had. So their access to it was to come along this road, and then it would turn a hard left down into here. So been around this area my whole life but these fields here belong to um, a neighbor that farmed them so in the reunion what i did is i came up here i parked my car right in this corner and i walked in here i walked all around this field um i walked up in here there's kind of that grove of trees up in here people probably remember in the in the map uh walked around that took some pictures and came back to my vehicle. I visited the main farm site. I took a lot of pictures around here of their machinery and whatnot, kind of as it is as of 2022. And then kind of, I had just a little bit of time left, <laughs> a little bit, it took me a while. Uh, went on another walk, came, uh, let's see, I didn't go down here. I think I came around these fields kind of just followed the contour, came over here to this field, you know, that has this funny shape over here. A lot of these fields, you know, of course, have funny shapes. Walked around here, walked up over into here, so you look down on the pond at a different angle, walked up the hill over here, snapped a few more pictures, and then rounded it off by taking a walk up by the lone oak tree and then back. So couldn't spend as much time as I wanted to at that point, but uh, it was an enjoyable walk. I'd like to share a lot of those uh, pictures in here. So let me check the progress of how our hero is doing. He's putting down a number of rocks, you know, we're going to have to pick it up at some point. So let's let him be. And... Let's go find some pictures. You know, it probably would help if I had the map open. And so maybe what I'll do while I'm talking here is just load up the map. Let's see. I think I need that editor. I apologize, I should have had that open. I'd like to open it so I can at least point, you know, from what vantage point a lot of these pictures were taken. And I don't know if that's of interest to anybody. Well, you know what? That isn't helping. It sure would be nice if it loaded the map. We'll remedy that in short order. I think I have so many versions of the editor on here. It gets confused as to which uh, or what to open or what have you. All right, let me tip this up. So so kind of to get the same perspective we just had, here's kind of that cat-shaped field, if you will, with a head up here. So I parked my vehicle here, and the very first shot I took was kind of looking out across this field. Lone oak trees up here in game. We're cultivating this up. Um, so kind of just looking kind of here. That's a tree off in the distance. And again, this is June, so everything is green. 
You can see there's clouds in the sky. It was a cooler than normal June this past year and a lot wetter. So it extended, uh, it, it extended the time before which they could start harvesting. In the foreground, I kind of alluded to this a little bit ago. These are the opening buds of, I think these are bachelor buttons. And this is Lone Oak property. They tried a new crop up there this year, namely flowers. There's a parcel in here. You know, and if you go to the map, it's this parcel right here, this big one here. I think it's, I think that's about 60 acres in real life. And they put four different bands of flowers, 15 acres a piece. And at one time I had written down the types of flowers. I know two of the 15 acre pieces are bachelor buttons. One is exclusively blue. And this one here is a mix. I always thought the bachelor buttons, you know, were purple or blue. I didn't know they would come in pink color, whatever that is. There was some uh, other types kind of in between the two. And I don't recall what those were called. Um, if I ever figured out, I'll uh, be happy to share it. But they gave it a try this year. Something new, another seed crop, but just not grass seed. So this is a close-up of one of those little bachelor button flowers. Like I say, they were just getting started, ready to come into bloom, which is kind of late for the time of year. So this now, I am headed the other way. I took a picture that way. Now I am headed down this, uh, this road right here into the back. And everybody that's played this map knows there's extensive woods back here uh, where you can do some cutting of timber and whatnot. And sure enough, in real life, that's exactly what's been done. In some later episodes, I, I hope to share a little bit of just what's gone on in the canyon down there where we did some of the ad activity back in the day. But this was the start of my walk. Here's the view. Uh, whoops, do I have two of these up? Sure enough, I do. You know what? That's that's going to take. Here we go. So this is looking south, going along that road. There's a finger of land that juts out. I think there's a spring in here that's a briar patch. So the whole field kind of settles in there. And this is just off the map. I think you can farm this piece in game. So this jutting of... Uh, it isn't really depicted in the map. It'd probably be right about out here. You know, so obviously then the map borders kind of right on this end. Um, but in real life, the ad is what you see headed down there. This, I think, is in the middle. I tried to take a panoramic. This little dot way over here, if you can see it, is the lone oak tree. Looks like it's a long ways over there. That's my vehicle parked over here. Yeah, it's uh, kind of a, a distance off of the air, um, but not as far as you might think. Uh, I think the panoramic style of taking the picture sort of makes it that way. These are the flower fields. You can kind of see the different strips here. One, two, three, four. Even the bee boxes, I didn't get too close to those to pollinate the flowers. There was a lot of bees kind of in this area. I'll be sharing some of that in a bit. Um, maybe we should go check out our guy. Oh, look at the ad. He's working away. Fantastic. So further on, uh, well, that's another picture I must have taken kind of at that angle, non-panoramic. This is a close-up of the grass. I believe this for right here is a type of ryegrass. Um, I always know ryegrass because on a single stem, you see kind of jutting out at certain angles the specific seeds on there. Uh, we'll see a different kind of grass in another one. This is just one variety, very common in the valley, perennial ryegrass. Very common to see that in yards, uh, lawns uh, that people put in their homes. And you can see also the little bits of yellow attached to it. You can see some of it along there. 
And I think I've told people in here before, I am allergic to grass. So, I mean, I don't want to say that I just sacrificed for you all, <laughs> which I didn't. I went out to enjoy myself, you know, seeing all this. But I probably shouldn't have been out there. You know, what I did is I tried to be very careful that I didn't walk in it that much. Um, just tried to keep it off my clothes if I could so it wouldn't cause me trouble. And you can see, even on the ground, all these little white bits. That is the pollen from the seed. And it's really a beautiful thing. I don't have any footage of it in the spring, but I'm sure others have seen it You know, around the world. Of course, this is how grass pollinates through the wind. And when you see it happen in the spring over a field, sometimes it's a big old almost like a fog that sits over the field but sometimes it doesn't just sit there a lot of times a wind will whip it up it does interesting things with it patterns little uh, whirlwinds if you will and tosses it hither and yon and it's pretty cool to watch uh, for me from a distance because I think if I went out there it'd be almost suicide to be messing with it with uh, with my allergic condition. But that's what's planted in this field, ryegrass, very common. This now is getting a little closer. This is the woodland block down there. So we are approximately right here. And you see, like even in this picture, you know, I give kudos to uh, Bullet Bill. He got the curve of this particular field. That's exactly what's there in real life. There is a curve coming here, but what uh, what Bull of Ill wouldn't know is just why that curve was there. This is a massive pile of rocks. You know, I think I've mentioned many times, all of these fields up here and this red dirt, it's just a breeding ground for rock. And when the fields are tilled up, you know, you just bring forth more and more of them. You know, kind of like we're doing, we'll just go check. I mean, you can see the rocks in here just laying about. That's kind of what I'm trying to simulate. Although I will say, I have never seen a white rock pulled up. Uh, most of them look like the out one there, or, and even not the out one either. Um, it's more reddish type rocks, um, you know, with the clay, clay red dirt sticking to them. So, it very much happens in real life. It's a real problem issue that the farmers have to deal with. And whether in the old days or the current, a lot of times the only thing you can do is to haul them off the farmable area, dump them in a pile somewhere so you can consolidate them. And this one here, it appears the uh, briars are kind of taken over and growing over the top of them. So I know in the satellite picture, what you would see is just green. So <laughs> you wouldn't know necessarily what's there and that it's a massive pile of rocks. I'll get some pictures here for you shortly. This is, it's fenced in this area and now we are sitting right at the corner. So, you know, it'd be right here. This would all be fenced off in real life along here, along there. And there was this access point going down into it and you'll notice well maybe it's hard to notice here these trees are all in rows years ago when this was just a regular uh, forest if you will or pasture ground where it wasn't managed as a woodland you know it was just helter skelter how the trees were in here now that it is managed and we'll see in a, a later picture these are all in here with uh in, in rows so that they can can work on it here you can kind of see the rows in there um, just kind of taking a peek down through there this is in the map we're now pointing this direction I went south just briefly because I don't get back here very often so you can see this area of the field that kind of snaked out a few trees very common the trees in the area the farmers they just farm around these areas where you got water and it's pretty much water year-round not farmable so 
they just kind of leave it be trees grow up briar patches and what have you the rock pile is kind of just to the right of me off frame here's the rocks so this kind of at the far end and I mean look at these bruisers you know they'll just sit in the ground like this and this is probably why they chose to put and this is a neighbor farmer this isn't loan oak property that's probably why they chose to put the rock pile here there probably was already an accumulation of rocks either in the ground and it's just difficult to farm with these things there you it's brutally hard to get them out of the ground dynamite or really big equipment and all of which costs money so that's probably why they dumped it off here but you can just see these massive boulders you know i uh, i climbed on top of this particular one and i took another picture this one here it's probably what was that chest high just to give you some idea of how massive this rock is and this was a pile just loaded with boulders like that um this is looking at the pile, I think, at another angle. It's kind of hard to see them in there. There's ferns and briars growing all over the top of them. Oh, maybe I don't have a picture off of the rock pile. Or maybe that was this one. Maybe it was this one here. I think I was standing up on it. Anyway, kind of a pathway down through the woodlands. I, I don't think this is how Bullet Bill arranged all the trees. So the player, I guess, when you would come into the map, you know, you would have, as you replanted, you could put them in whatever rows. Well, maybe it is kind of in rows. You know, I take that back. Maybe, uh, maybe those are in a few rows there. Kind of once you get around the edge, but it's looking in kind of somewhere in here looks like someone's given the trees hopefully some TLC I don't know <laughs> these don't look too good this one looks snapped off and I gotta say too this is on the heels uh, was it two years prior year and a half we had a nasty ice storm so that could be why some of these don't look in the best shape this kind of a grassy little area I think in game we're now down to this corner. It's quite a bit more open than what you see on the map here. Uh, just looking in there, it looks like they had a pile. They probably burned some uh, stumps and whatnot in there. Now, yeah, standing on the corner, just kind of looking down around there. This must be an access port road going down through there. So this is kind of uh, in the field here oh kind of doing a panoramic from here to here and once again we're kind of in the cat head field right down there let's check our guy he's working like a good feller but you know what i'm gonna stop him here because i have a feeling he didn't finish the job clear over there so we're going to go over and make sure he gets the job done. And you can kind of see how this double mod works. Yep, there it is, one little triangle. You know, when you, when you uh, cultivate over the top of the area that's been stubble cultivated, it, uh, it gives you the regular cultivation texture. I really like it. I think I've mentioned this before because, you know, in Farming Sim, we're limited on how many things we can do in the field. I think they improve this with each uh, version. Um, but especially in these old versions, you know, it was kind of the same thing all the time, rinse and repeat. And so I liked having this double cultivator in because it forced me, I say forced, I wouldn't have to do it twice. Um, I just would, just to get that additional time in the field. So all of this here I'm going to be cultivating again, so that we have another operation to do in the field. It would be even better if I invested in another cultivator or something, and used a different implement on the field, 
and and I certainly could do that. Uh, maybe I need to. Well, let me just take a peek. I'm trying to remember what mods might I have. Find the right area plows cultivators. Here we go. Yeah, so there's any number of things I could get in here, although the big bud pack is way too large for the tractor I'm using. Platinum expansion I had. So oh and that's a roller. I suppose I could even get the roller. The thing about the roller is I believe it puts down the cultivator texture, which I don't know, maybe it would work in this field. Um yeah, maybe I'll think about getting that roller and that can be the second pass to prepare the seabed, if you will. Uh, but a lot of times a roller was used in conjunction with the planting of the field, so uh, I don't know that it's very often in farming sim that you see someone plant and roll at the same time. I mean, <laughs> you don't want to have the roller come behind the planter because uh, it'll it'll end up uh, taking out, you know, whatever you just put into it. Well, you know, I'm looking at the clock. Time passes so quickly. Another 30 minutes have gone, so I'm going to terminate the episode here. Looks like we're about ready to rain anyhow, and we'll continue in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye until the next time.